Alright guys, welcome to part 5 of the Little Big Planet 2 Beta Create Mode walkthrough. In this final part, we're going to be covering Sackbots, Controlinators, and the new music sequences that, that are available to you in Little Big Planet 2. Now, first off, here we've got a Sackbot. This is your default Sackbot. He has a circuit board. And this brain here in the middle, this is his default behavior. And you can copy these to make multiple um, brains, and you can hook all the brains up to inputs and um, to activate different um, modes of thinking at different times. But for now, we're just going to have the one um, brain. The central brain will reflect the options that we pick here if you press square, and you can have all these options for your sackbot. Now, the first option is the costume. You can pick any costume that you've saved and you can make any um, custom costume for him. It, it works pretty much in exactly the same way that the costuming does for um, your normal sack people. And you can also have him have the same costumes as player 1, player 2, player 3, player 4, or the copy owner. The copy owner is the person who is controlling the sackbot. You can hook controlinators like this one up to sackbots. And I'll show you how to do that later, but if you have a controlinator hooked up to a sackbot, the sackbot will wear whatever costume the person who is controlling the sackbot is wearing. It'll wear the same costume as its controller. For now, we'll just have a custom costume. I'll just pick one that I made earlier, chicken. Just to show you how it works. Now, animation style. This will affect sort of how the robot walks around, what noises it makes, stuff like that. You can have robot, zombot, sleepy, as well as a few characters from the story and Sackboy himself. It'll even act like a normal Sackboy. Funny head size. What funny head size will do is it will keep the head size the same no matter how big or small you make the Sackboy. You can make them this big and you can make them this small whether or not that option is turned on by the way. And if that's ticked, no matter what size you make the Sackbot, the head will always be the same size. We'll just turn that off for now. Um, as I said, it has a circuit board and you can show that or pick whether it's shown in there, as well as by pressing R1 where the poppet is hovered over the sackbot. You can have expression types, just like you can for normal sack people. You can have happy, sad, angry, scared, and neutral, as you can um, usually. You can have um, the different levels of um, each emotion. You can have cheerful, or one, level 1, level 2, level 3, for how extreme you want the emotion to be. Um, for the sack person, or sack bot, Behavior. You can set different behaviors for the sackbot as well. This is this is essentially how the sackbot will act and what the sackbot will do um, on a very basic level in the um, in the level. Idle um, is it will just stand there and do nothing. Follow is it will follow any sackbot or the closest sackbot in its awareness radius. Flee it will run away from sackbots in its awareness radius. Patrol it will sort of just walk around the area in which it will walk anywhere it can. Um, in the level. Um, act. You can also have them act, and this allows you to capture motion with this record function here, and you can do anything you want. Anything that a normal sack person can do, you can move the arms around, you can jump, you can run, you can change the emotion too, and you press circle to stop. And what the act function will do is it will play back the motion that you just captured um, by pressing record. So if I press play, it'll start doing exactly what my sack put, what I just told it to do. And it'll just do that over and over again, if you have it set to loop absolute or loop relative. Loop relative will loop it from where it starts, from where it starts in the level. If you, if you have it set to the middle of the motion capture, for example, and you say loop relative, it will loop relative to that position from when you start the level. If you have it set, loop, set to loop absolute, it will start from the beginning um, of the animation. Or play once, it'll just play the entire thing once, or play it from where it is once, and that's all it will do. Once it's once it stops, it'll just be idle. Um, and you can set it to restart. Restart means it will s um, you, you're essentially setting it back to the beginning of the motion capture. It can also follow waypoints um, or tags. You can set the color and the label of the tag it follows there and it will just follow that around whenever it finds that tag in its awareness radius which you can change there. You can also set it to be hostile whether it will attack 
um, other sack people or sack bots? Yes, no. Movement. You can set how fast your sack bot walks. 100% is normal walking speed. 150% is it will walk one and a half times as fast. 30% it will work. It will walk 30% um, as fast as a normal sack bot will. That's its maximum walking speed, by the way. Not its um, standard or average walking speed. That's the fastest it will go. Afraid of heights? Yes, no. That will allow you to control whether it will go up higher, how high it can go, whether it will use um, jump pads, stuff like that. Afraid of danger? Yes, no. Will it run away from uh, fire, electricity, gas, plasma, that sort of stuff? Yes, no. Um, can it go from the middle ground, the foreground, the background? Can it change between them? Can it change it layer? Yes, no. Can it jump? Yes, no. And is it right-handed? Uh, yes or no. Sackbots can also use create nators, grab nators, and control nators. You will have to set how it use these, uses these with uh, with the brains that I showed you earlier. You have to make several different ones for it to work properly. But you can set it to be able to pick these up and use them if you would like. You can also have it so it looks around at any sackbot or the closest sack boy in its uh, radius. As you can see, it follows my movements there. You can also have it look at tags. And you can set the color of the and the label of the tag there, and it will look at any tag like that that you set it to in its awareness radius. Now we're going to move on to the controller nature. And the controller nature will allow me to. Um, directly control items with the controller using the um, buttons itself. And it essentially shifts control from my Sackboy to whatever I've got these buttons hooked up to. Now first off, I'm going to show you how you can use it contro to control a Sackbot. What you do here is, you've got an option in here to make the remote control yes, no. You have to put a controller um outside for your Sackboy to use, and one in here for the Sackbot on the Sackbot circuit board. You set the one on the circuit board, to receiver, and you set the one on the uh, the one on the outside to transmitter. Now you have these colors set to the same thing, same color as uh, um, of each one, so that so it can so they are connected essentially. And that means that when I press triangle here, I can control this sackbot. We can jump. I can use my poppet as well. You can set um, the poppet um, to be able to be used or not, and I can set him to do anything a normal sack person can do. Absolutely anything. So that's how you can use it to control sack bots. But there are also heaps of other things you can make it do by hooking the buttons up directly to inputs. You can hook the individual buttons up to individual things. Now the buttons you've got available to you, you've got um, the D-pad left and right, and the D-pad up and down. You can't set the individual D-pad buttons like up, left, down and right. You can only set left and right and up and down together. And they work as directional inputs. Um, so left and right will make thing will use both left and right buttons on the um, D-pad. And up and down will do the same for the up and down buttons. It's digital input, it's not analog. It's either on or it's off. Same thing for the analog sticks, but it's analog input. You can set analog, left analog stick, left right, left analog stick, up down, right analog stick, left right, right analog stick, up down. That works in exactly the same way as by pairing left and right together and up and down together. And that allows for analog input. You can also use six axis in exactly the same way. You can have tilt left right and tilt up down to um, have analog input. You can also set, set the X, circle, triangle, and square buttons for digital on-off input. R1, R2, L1, L2 do the exact same thing. You can also use L3, but not R3, um, for d digital input as well. This is um, this allows you to activate the control enter whether it works or not. And you can set this. You can hook this up to outputs. So once the sack, or what this does is essentially once the sackbot gets in the sack, the the controllerator, th whatever this switch is hooked up to will activate. So that's what that switch does there. And the different options for it. 
you can give the control editor a name. That's the remote control option you saw there. Disable pop controls, yes, no. Can you use the poppet um, in the control editor or not? That's irrespective of whether you have anything hooked up to the square button or not. Trigger radius, um, how far, how close does your Sackboy have to be to be able to get in the control editor by pressing tri um, triangle? You can also have it, once they enter that radius, they automatically enter it, yes, no. Show the circuit board, um, side mounted, that um, changes the way your sack person sits in it. And visible in play mode, um, yes or no. Now over here, the last thing I've got to show you is the music sequencer. The music sequencer um, allows you to make your own custom music. And I'll show you the inputs we have for it or the different instruments you have for it, rather. There are a whole ton of instruments that you have for the music sequencer. That, that's all of them there. You've got pianos, you've got pia uh, percussion, you've got guitars, synthesizers, sound effects, um, tuned instruments, wind, all sorts of... There's, there's crazy ones, you've got your basic pianos, you've even got ones like what tennis, crazy ones all sorts of crazy sounds for you to use and you can place them all on this music sequencer now the music sequencer options you can change the name of the sequencer the number of volume sliders you can set different volumes for different layers um, and stuff like that um, and you got different channels that's essentially like each layer you can make this bigger and smaller just like any normal uh, circuit board and that's what the volume does. The volume is the channels are essentially like layers on the um, circuit board. And you can have um, volume sliders for all of them or just one of them whatever you like. The trigger radius that's sort of just like how a normal piece of music works when you enter that trigger radius the um, music sequencer will begin. You can have it loop yes no the tempo, how fast it goes, and the swing. You can also have echo time, echo feedback, and echo mix um, for different sound effect modifications, and you can have it set to a reverb setting as well. Those are different options to the normal um, reverb settings as well. You can show the circuit board, yes, no. You, have, you can have it visible in play mode if you want, and you can set it to different colors if you would like as well. Now, to show you the instruments. All the instruments work in the, in the same way, but we'll just use um, a basic piano just to show you the instruments themselves. Now, these are all different keys. You've got all the way down there to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 um, octaves. You've got 7 or 8 octaves there. And you can use L1 and R1 to change the length of the note, as you can see there, it gets longer and longer and shorter and shorter. You can press, um, the you can use the right analog stick, if you press the right analog stick up, that will change the, v or up, or down, up or down, that will change the volume of the, um, note that you have at the moment, as you can see it changes the size of the bubble, that's how loud it is. The timbre, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but the timbre, I guess that's sort of like how um, long or short the note is. Really short, it's just instantaneous, but um, if it's long and it, and it goes red, it sort of drags on a little, a little bit. And you can place notes all over this. You've got eight little dots in each coloured section. And you can place multiple dots on the same line to press multiple keys at once and it will play it over and over again and you can use up, down, left, right on the d-pad to rewind it fast forward it um, to undo and redo things as you can in normal create mode and yeah that's how the music sequencer works and that's pretty much all I've got to show you in Little Red Planet 2 uh, create mode if you have any questions or any comments feel free to leave them in the section below but other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.